Over the past 12 programs of Doing Business in the 21st Century, we've covered a range of topical issues, from ethical taxation to the role of boards to integrated reporting and integrated thinking. In this, our final program of the series, we answer questions arising from the topics we've covered. I'm Lee Robertson, with me is Mervyn King, and our special guest today is Cindy Zilwa, Chief Executive of Nkonki Incorporated. We've received a number of questions about non-executive directors. So I want to start with a really fundamental one. What is the role, Mervyn, of a non-exec director on a board? Well, first of all, the appellation non-executive director is business jargon because um, in the Companies Act doesn't recognize the difference between non-executive, independent, non-executive director is a director. And every director has the same duties and responsibilities. One usually sees when there's a corporate failure that the executive directors uh, get held to be culpable and the non-executive directors not. So people think that uh, an NED has a, a lower level of responsibility. Mm. That is not so. Every director has the same duty and responsibility. But the non-executive director comes in not being at the workplace every day, not being at the coalface of the operations and the functioning of the company. And therefore, the theory of not seeing the wood for the trees yeah. applies. And uh, he or she uh, should be a skilled person, fulfilling a skill needed by the company, for example, a quantity survey in a construction company. Uh, and he or she should have had experience as a director or as an executive of a company. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you there because I want to get into detail about the skills mm. that an, an non-exec should have. Cindy, what is your view? I know you're a non-exec director yes. of a number of different companies. What do you see your role as? I think the role is very wide and um, trying to describe it becomes very difficult. But I think if you want to narrow it down, uh, for me it starts with uh, the knowledge of the issues that have to be dealt with. I think it is the role of every non-executive director to make sure that they have got the knowledge of the issues. Secondly, they must be able to apply their independent mind and be objective, because if they lose that, then their role will not be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I think the other most important thing is to make sure that as an NED, as Mevin is saying, like any other director, the interests of the company must actually come first. And I think the last one for me that's critical is that the role of the NED is to create the time so that they can be able to apply themselves to the issues at hand. So at the end of the day, when you actually sum up into those things, each one has got a branch that has got a number of things that have to be done. But I think with my experience then, I mean, it really comes down to those four things to say, you know, have knowledge, apply your independent mind, and thirdly, uh, the interests of the company must come first mm -hmm. and create the time that is necessary to fulfill the responsibility. So, Mervyn, adding to the skill that Cindy's just spoken about, so do you think that you have to be an, an, a mature person with grey hair to sit on a board? <laughs> no, not necessarily, uh, but uh, you certainly need to have knowledge of corporate life and uh, some worldly experience and business experience. But uh, the other very interesting thing is you have to understand what's going on. If you don't understand, you should ask. And you know, there's a natural human inclination not to say, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. and, but you should make sure you do understand. And uh, one of the things that an NED can add to a meeting is ask what I call an intellectually naive question. You know, Sorry, I don't understand this. Mr. Chairman Three, you could the chief executive please explain it? And yeah. then you get a flow of discussion happening. And uh, it makes management think as well. Mm. Mm. And you have to be brave enough to do that, to say, mm. I don't understand, so that you don't look stupid among your peers. Mm. You always say, Mervyn, that the board should have a kaleidoscope of skills. So is it okay for each non-exec to have a, in a particular skill? But saying that, they still need to, I mean, if you're a director of an insurance company, you have to understand what's going on. Absolutely. Mm. So you, I mean, a board, uh, should identify the skills needed around the boardroom table. The board can recommend to shareholders, I'll go back to my example, a construction company, let's say the board believes 
if they had a quantity survey, it will help them make better business judgment calls. So they can recommend to shareholders we would like a quantity survey, but if you have a, in the private sector, 60% shareholder, he wants his friend at the golf club appointed to mm. the board. Well, you're going to have the friend at the golf club mm. because you've got a democracy. Mm. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. it Lehman who had the ballerina on the board? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think what I can add on skills, uh, Lee, is that the knowledge of the business and the industry is very critical because the accounting skills, uh, if they are not applied relevantly to the issues at hand, they might not be useful. Same thing with the legal skills or any other skills that are actually coming in. So as I actually handle this in my book, The ACE Model, to say for you to be effective, you also need to understand exactly what is happening there. You cannot say now, because previously or long time ago, people used to say my role in the board is the accounting skills. Mm. Whenever the discussion is around accounting, I'm going to jump in. And the other one says, when it's legal, I will jump in. Uh, the other one, you know, comes in and says, as an actuary, I will only talk, you know, when it's actuarial related issues. I think that time is gone, and yeah. case law has actually proved that. What you need to know, you need to make sure that you've got that level of knowledge that will make you understand the issues that are being discussed, because your role uh, is also important mm. there. And also in, in terms of the liability, you cannot say to the judge, and it has been proven in various cases, you cannot say, but I was a poor accountant, you know. The <laughs> issues at stake now were legal issues or that one needed an actuary or somebody with quantity surveying skills. I wouldn't have been expected to do that. That would not stand. Yeah. So therefore the skill is really more to say, what you have is your background knowledge. But for you to be able to discharge your responsibility is to apply mm -hmm. your mind on the level of new knowledge that you must actually mm -hmm. have and where you are. And that's a really good way of, of, of stating it. Mm -hmm. Take us through the legal liability, because there is personal legal liability of being a director. There's stature, sure, but there's also risk. Of course. That's why I always say the, the first thing one has to have before taking an NED appointment is courage because you're putting your personal estate and your personal reputation on the line. Mm. Then um, the legal liability usually arises out of a failure of a duty of care. So you make a business judgment call collectively, uh, which causes harm to the company three, four years down the line. So theoretically, the company has a cause of action against the directors individually. Uh, but that's been ameliorated somewhat by the New Companies Act because it includes under Section 75 and 76 the Business Judgment Rule, which says if you have no personal financial interest in the matter, objectively speaking, if you had all the facts, and in the light of all that, at the time, in those circumstances you made, which appeared to the Board to be a rational business decision at that time, you escape liability if, in fact, it turns out to be the wrong business decision. But at that time, if it was rational, you escape liability because it cannot be expected of a board of directors, especially the NEDs who aren't at the co-face of the business, to make the correct business judgment calls 10 out of 10. No one mm. does it. Mm. How easy is that to prove? Well, um, uh, with difficulty because, mm. uh, and that's why it's, it's easier for a proof of knowledge at that time with the executive directors at the coalface rather than the non-executive director who's looking at the PAC and relies on the PAC in making the judgment call. But the, the law is also one you can't be supine. So that if you read your PAC and you have something crosses your mind in the PAC which raises a query in your mind, then you have a duty to inquire. Mm. Yeah. Can't remain silent. Uh, I want yeah. to go on to, um, Sandy, you alluded to it earlier, the Companies Act states that directors have a duty to act in the best interest of the company mm. and not shareholders. So that's definitely the best interest of the company yes. as opposed to shareholders. Mm. How does that, in, in pr practically, how does that work? Yes, I think it, it, it sounds like it's a difficult concept to apply, mm. but I think it's very easy, uh, which is why then you must have the courage, as Mervyn is saying, and the ability to apply yourself independently of what everyone else would like to have and focus on what the company 
deserves to have. I think the simple example that's used everywhere to illustrate this is a question of a dividend, for instance. Uh, shareholders, every shareholder would love a dividend. And uh, if the company is not in a position to do that without jeopardizing its ability to sustain itself in the medium uh, to long term, uh, then as a director, your mind must be there, irrespective of the people around. And uh, it could be the same thing with the stakeholders, for instance, negotiations with the various stakeholders that are actually critical. What they want might be reasonable and whatever, but when it comes to the circumstances of the company, it might not be the best decision. And therefore, that becomes your compass to know what is it that will make me pass my role of um, protecting the interest of this company at heart, the growth of this company at heart, and its sustainability into the near future. Because the decisions that the boards of directors make do not have an impact today or tomorrow. They can actually have an impact in the next 10, yeah. 10 years, in the next 20 years, or in the next three years. And uh, which goes back to the earlier discussion you had about as a director, when it comes to legal liability, you cannot be expected to know everything. But there is a very clear line between negligence and diligence. I think in whatever you do, if you make sure that you have been diligent, uh, that will be very easy to prove. Negligence is also very easy to prove because there are people who might actually take decisions very negligently and that will actually catch up with mm. them. And uh, also in applying yourself and going through the pack, there is a concept of validation and contextualization, which I, I also unpack in the book ACE model. Because whatever you hear, you must not be reliant on the information that's just in front of you. Uh, so that you can say 10 years later, but this is the paper I was given. I was supposed to agree. Because the question will be, given your position, and your level of knowledge, it would have been reasonable of you to yeah. be aware of, of the time that... To have that a broader understanding. Exactly, you know, because the maybe the industry trends could be going completely mm -hmm. against what you have in front of you. Or all the other things that are actually happening that will have an impact on the company are actually yeah. taking place. Yeah, but, but, but so just, when you apply yourself, those are the kinds mm, of things you need to if, take into account. If you account. are a director sitting on the board and you represent the major shareholder, the holding company, uh, Mervyn, how easy is it to ring fence what's in the best interest of the company, what's in the best interest of the shareholder? Well, one of the greatest challenges of the director, especially the NED, is intellectual honesty. Honestly applying your mind in the best interest of this incapacitated, inanimate person called the company, that's dependent on your heart, mind and soul, because it has no animation, it has nothing. So the director becomes the heart, mind and soul of the company. And when one realises that, that the company is an incapacitated person, but it's a person, it gives content to the duties of good faith, care, skill and diligence. In the decision-making process, you take account of the needs, interests and expectations of the various stakeholders linked to the business. One of the stakeholders is the shareholder. The shareholder is a very important stakeholder. There's a conglomeration of very important incorporeal rights. It points the board, can remove the board, can decide the very purpose of the business of the company. But it certainly doesn't, as people say colloquially, the uh, shareholders own the company. Mm. You know, slavery was abolished a few hundred years ago. <laughs> if I said to either you or Cindy, I own you, I think you'd be horrified. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so and, once and again... Also, yeah. just, just to add on to that, you know, when someone represents the interests of the shareholder, uh, I think in mind they must know they are not doing that short term, uh, medium term or long term. It's like continuously. So the interest of the shareholder is to make sure that the company survives, it grows and it thrives, you know, also in the long term. So I think when a director takes into account that as well, he will stop being maybe short term minded to say my shareholder wants this today. You know, he yeah. will be more saying for me to take care of the interests of the shareholder, I need to make sure that this baby, this incapacitated baby that's a company thrives and grows. Yeah, and that's all the more reason why a director has to have courage. Yes. We're going to a short break now, but do stay with us as there are more questions and answers when we return. Bonki has the professional capacity to deliver on your external and internal audit assurance requirements. Visit Ngongi.com for